Hi again. Notice that the camera has stayed the same and I'm wearing the same clothes but it got dark outside and the lights just go funky on this camera. I'm sorry I can't do anything about it. This video is going to be about women's roles because I keep getting feedback positive and negative and even the positive feedback indicates that people really don't understand what the Bible says about women's roles in the body of Christ okay so that's what I'm going to cover the only woman teacher of adults spiritual teacher of adults in the entire Bible is Jezebel in Revelation and it's not nice okay so that's your first big hint that something's wrong secondly if there were supposed to be women spiritual teachers in the Bible then that would have had a precedent somewhere else before church and they ain't none okay the rabbis were always male that was very clearly laid out in the Mosaic law they had to be male they had to be specific tribes and it was really important that they not have crushed testicles which means they had to have testicles just not crushed ones if you were in the tribe that was the teacher tribe which is Levi and you had crushed testicles you couldn't you couldn't operate as a priest Okay, women don't have testicles at all so they can't be priests if you get that okay there's no precedence therefore at any time in history prior to church or during church for a woman to be a pastor teacher you got that I hope they ain't none mentioned in the Bible only males are mentioned as teachers Boy, men came to das class in my badly accented, heavily on purpose, American accent in Greek, is in Ephesians 4:12, and it ain't talking about. Well, it's not 12, but it's in that area, and it ain't talking about females. Okay, period. Get that straight. So, what is it talking about? It's talking about, you know, as far as women go, what roles do we actually have? I think I'm going to take a little break and I'll come right back. Okay, what kind of roles do we actually have? Well, that was kind of laid out at the very beginning in Genesis. The woman was taken from Adam's rib, not from some other part of his anatomy. The idea was that she is to fit him. Ribs fit in a cage. They protect your, you know, your most vital organs. And it's somewhere in the Talmud or the Mishnah, I forget which, well, Talmud is the Mishnah's part of it, that the woman was taken from Adam's rib because she's not his superior nor his inferior, but is designed to fit him or something to that effect. You Talmud guys put a correct comment in the video description but she was subordinate in authority to who her husband that was precedent setting on purpose in other words if I were married the man who would be my husband God help him would be my superior no matter whether he's superior to me in any other way you got that? If I marry a guy who is dumber than me, I'm not allowed to marry a guy who's dumber in scripture than me, unfortunately. That's why I never got married. If I married a guy who's dumber than me, then he would be my authority. If I was stupid enough to marry a guy who's dumber in scripture than me, and I don't mean being able to spout it, I mean the, the whole package, how well you can put it together. If I did that, 
then I would be in trouble with God, but he would still be my husband, he'd still be my superior, and I'd still have to obey him to death. Okay, got that? And I basically, when I first found out about this, I was like in my 20s. And I said to God, you marry me off because I have no idea how to pick a husband. And he never did that. He might do it now. You know, Abraham waited until he was 175 before he, 160 before he had kids. So maybe I'm supposed to still get married when I'm nearly 60, who knows. But he hasn't done that yet. So if he doesn't, that's fine with me. I don't care. I used to care. But I don't now. Okay? And I stopped the whole sex thing when I was like 27 because I thought, this is wrong. And I got punished for God for doing that too. <clears throat> okay? I got skeletons in my closet. And God's taking them away. At the cross 2,000 years ago, actually. Never feel guilty for your past. There's no point in it. Okay? People will make you feel guilty. They'll bring it up all the time, but... God doesn't. You forget it and move on. Philippians 3.14 Catasco, bon, dioco, esto, perven, tesan, oclesio, tu teu, en Cristo, Jesus. Okay? Now, the woman's inferiority or superiority in other ways varies with the office that she ends up having. Now, you have to look. I mean, this should be something everybody understands, but I guess they don't. You're always supposed to interpret scripture in the time in which it was written to understand the point God's making. And he's preserved history too, literature too, so we know a whole lot about what was going on at that time in any time in the Bible history. Okay? One of the things, one of the things that God brings up a lot is the interaction of men and women in the Bible. I don't know if you've noticed that. There were women who were prophetesses. That does not mean teacher. That means they were designed to at certain times when asked, when asked, they predicted things or they gave God's answer but they had to be asked. They were not teachers like Hulda her job was she was a cleaning lady. She kept the priestly wardrobe. Okay? And she was asked by Hilkiah, you know, what what's the story with this book that I found in the temple? And it really wasn't Hilkiah who found it. It was his son Jeremiah. But Hilkiah was the high priest, so Jeremiah turns it over to him. You know. And then Huldah gives her famous reply. But she was asked. There's nothing else said about her in the whole Bible. See, every time you get a story in the Bible, you got to pick apart all the, like, parameters of the passage so you can de derive the right principles from it. And stupid females keep coming to me and say, well, see, you're a teacher. Hulda was a teacher. No, she wasn't. She was a cleaning lady. It says very clearly in Scripture what she did for a living. She was not a pastor teacher. You got that? Then you got, and their other famous example is Deborah. Deborah was not a pastor teacher either. In fact, if you bothered to look at the story, at the end of the story with Deborah and Barak, what Deborah had told Barak was when he wanted her to come along and fight with him. And she said, you don't want to do that because if you do that, a woman's going to get the victory in the battle, not you. That's a very clear statement of no, women are not superior in that office. Do you get this? And her role was not pastor teacher, it was mishpat, governing. Now, I'm, I, I'm real queasy about that thing. I am absolutely not a woman's lover, okay? Never have been, never will be. She had a governing role that was a civil role. She was a judge in Israel, okay? That meant that she had, people came to her I mean, you know, you really kind of have to read the Bible to find out what these things mean. When people had a dispute between them, they came to her because there was no government at the time. There was no, like, you know, we have federal government, state government, city government. Well, they didn't have those things in Israel in those days. God was king and then everything else was loosey-goosey. 
and God would appoint a judge to settle matters, pattern of Moses. All right? Moses was not a priest. His brother Aaron was a priest. Okay, Deborah was not a priest. He had to have testicles to be a priest. Deborah, however, was a judge, which means that people brought their disputes to her and she decided them. That's a civil role. That's a quasi-juridical um, role. Okay, so women can be judges in courts. And a lot of them are. Depends on if you're qualified. But it's okay for a woman to be a judge in biblical standards. That's civil, not a pastor teacher. I'm not so sure I would go so far as to say women ought to have like political roles like senators and representatives and stuff, but we accept it in the U.S. So, you know, in the ancient world, women were allowed to have those roles. It depended on how qualified and how good they were and what house they were from. They, they, family, family, that was related to your family. You know, if you, if you were related to Scipio the Younger, this is in Roman society, and you happen to be a female and you happen to be real good at, you know, explaining the law, you could be a senator. I don't remember that there were any women that were appointed senators, but it wasn't excluded. You weren't excluded from office because you were female. It just wasn't normal, okay? And it wasn't normal for women to be judges in Israel either. She's the only one, Deborah. So the point about that is telling you that the, the society that she lived in was so apostate there were no qualified men. And she was married to a guy. So apparently it was okay with him. You're beginning to get some sense of, Bible's real precise about the roles of women. And it's not that they can't own businesses. There's that whole thing in Proverbs about a woman running the household of the man so he can sit in the gate and do the politics. That's what the men did in the ancient world. The women ran the businesses they because that was considered part of the household. So yeah, women can run businesses. I had a real problem with God about that because he threw me into business. I own a business. And he threw me into it in my 20s instead of marrying me off. <laughs> and I kept saying to him, are you sure I should own this? I mean, you know, when you get a bunch of new clients at your doorstep, somebody just delivers them to you. you get, that's a pretty clear sign that, yeah, it's okay. I'm dead serious. That's how I got it. I was literally thrown into business. And I own it. And I've owned it my whole adult life. Alright, so yeah, it's okay with God. But owning a business is, a, is an offshoot of running a household. And as far as I'm concerned, he's my boss. Alright? So women can run business. That's not being a pastor or teacher. You with me on this? I'd rather not own a business. I would rather be barefoot and pregnant. Well, not the pregnant part. But that's not God's will for my life, very clearly. So it doesn't matter that I'm female to be in business. It wouldn't matter if I were female to be a judge, although I don't want that job. But it's okay for a woman to be in that job, which means she could be an attorney or anything else that's, you know, quasi in the same category. All right? It's okay for a woman to fight. I don't know if it's okay for a woman to be in the army. I don't see anything in scripture saying that's okay. But if a woman is attacked or like when Sisera came to, you know, the tent, I think the woman's name was Jael, she, she killed him. So it's okay for a woman to kill somebody who's her enemy. Right? It's okay to own a business. It was always okay in the ancient world. They didn't have the same view that we do today about women. They viewed uh, you know, um, running a business as a kind of servanthood. And you were running it on behalf of your husband or uh, some, some man. And I, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So it's not wrong for a woman to run a business. I'm not sure how, how big that business can be, but it, I guess it can be pretty big. I wouldn't want to do that, but you know. You see what I'm saying? There are different roles for women. Okay. And then there are certain roles for women that are the same as the role for everybody, male or female. A, witness to Christ. B, reporting on the Bible. 
That's part of your training as a king priest in training in church. Everybody's supposed to learn the Bible. Inside, outside, upside down. It's supposed to become your thinking pattern. That's the only good deed God counts in all of Scripture. Even the Jews know that today. They, you know, the highest praise that goes to the study of Torah. And that was always true in the ancient world that they didn't have scripture for most of the Bible's life. So they had angels, they had teachers who were given special gifts of understanding what was going to come. They had the prophets that God trotted out like a little serial novel who each wrote books. Okay? No woman wrote a Bible book. Get that. But you are required to learn it male or female, you're required to talk about it, male or female, that's Deuteronomy 6 and 30. And when you talk about it, you are a witness. When you talk about it, you are a reporter and you are liable for what you say. Get that loud and clear. If I misrepresent scripture and I find out I did that, I have to tell you, assuming that I did it publicly. And I do it publicly primarily because I hate being in public. And I'm trying to train for this. It puts my feet to the fire when I have to make a video like this or do those exegetical videos and stuff. I have to do my work harder. It, it you know, I have an old sin nature just like everybody else and it gets real lazy like everybody else. And if I do it in public like this, I'm more nervous about getting it wrong. And I'd have to tell you if I find out that I got it wrong. So that's why I do it. I am a witness. I am a reporter. That's my primary job in public. Whether anybody listens or not, it's making me become trained in my head. So even if nobody ever read my web pages, nobody ever looked at the videos, too bad, it's my training, I gotta do it. Now it turns out that there is, and this is where I get into the next thing about women's roles, it turns out that there is a special subset of reporting I have to do, which is about the Hebrew meter, the Bible meter. I've gotta do that until I die. It is not known in Christendom, there's a garbled version that survives in Judaism. I, I'm, 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 I'm flat caused to know it. I mean, I could be standing at my kitchen sink thinking about the dishes or something and all of a sudden, you know, da-da-da is metered. When I'm in the middle of a video, I'm looking at a passage like I just did with Psalm 110 and it's like, uh-oh, that's metered. That's how I get it. And then I have to go to the passage, look at the Hebrew or look at the Greek and, you know, the same thing happened to me with the Magnificat, which I did not want to do. That's metered. And the closest thing you can say to a woman writing in the Bible are the recorded speeches of women. Mary's happens to be metered, and she's speaking it right on the fly as soon as Elizabeth talks to her. And I, I didn't want to do that. I had to. Because it was an essential missing link between Daniel 9 and Paul and I was caused to know Paul was muted while I was in the middle of talking with somebody with 1689 Baptist on YouTube about whether or not how the doctrine of election works because he's a Calvinist and I was arguing with them. I like him a lot but he doesn't believe in 1 John 1 9 so I had to stop talking to him. Because there's no point talking to somebody who doesn't believe in that verse. You'll never be able to have fruitful discussion. It's wasting their time and yours. Okay, but I was in the middle of talking to him, writing a comment when BAM hits my brain. Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 is metered. It is? And then I have to go and do it. So you see, I'm being, I'm being given this information. Uh, well, basically, he, he gives me like part of it. And then I have to do my homework. And it's hard. It, it's worth it, but it's hard. To, you know, I fall on the floor, I work 12, 16 hours at it, and then I, I collapse because 
you know, it's hard. It, I mean, it's, it's not conceptually hard to do, but there's so many numbers in interrelationships. The numbers is my business. So now you know why God put me in a business. <laughs> so I, what I'm trying to say is there are specific jobs God will give to a woman even that seem to be, seem to be something that God would give to a male scholar or teacher and that would seem to violate whatever we think are the right roles between men and women and I'm one of those people who really was nervous about this because I'm like how come I know and they don't and over the years because I've been doing this now for years over the years uh, the understanding that I've got of it so far is that look brain out for all of what you're doing is really secretarial job all I'm doing is documenting how you find it, documenting what it is, putting it in videos, putting it in writing, putting putting it in web pages, and then some guy with authority is supposed to, I don't know who, might be after I'm dead, some guy with authority is supposed to work with it. And it's his authority and his working with it, because he'll own it, because the stuff is not copyrighted. I won't copyright it. It's the Bible. Why would I copyright it? He's supposed to work with that material and then he teaches it. It's got his name on it, his authority, la di la. Maybe he's a scholar, maybe he's a, a you know, pastor. I don't know. But my job for all of the technicality of it and what do you want to call it, erudition, is really a librarian's function, a, a reporter's function, uh, a uh, researcher function. Women can be researchers, and then the man here, Jesus Christ, directs who's the, the human authority to get it. So I'm basically employed by him on behalf of somebody I don't know, maybe after I'm dead, who will then, that saves him time, him male time, saves him time in doing his due diligence, and then he'll run with it, maybe after I'm dead. You know, I'm going to be 60. I don't know how long I'll live. So until I die is what I'm supposed to do. So now what have we seen? We've seen that in civil authority, there are a lot of different rules for women that maybe in the West uh, we used to consider solely the province of males, but the Bible doesn't. Okay? You know, civil authority, certain civil authority, running businesses, you know, that kind of thing. As far as spiritual teaching goes, no. No woman is a pastor teacher. She can teach her kids. She can teach a bunch of kids, like, you know, Sunday school, but not adults. Not pastor teaching, no. But that doesn't prohibit her from being a researcher, which is essentially um, an assistant to a teacher. All right. Um, and that's kind of the role I've got. Every woman, every man, every child who believes in Jesus Christ must be a witness when called upon. Witness in the Bible does not mean you go run out and knock on doors and hand out leaflets. God is not a salesman. Witness in the Bible, the Greek word is martyrao, and it has similar meaning in, in Hebrew. Okay. Witness means when someone calls upon you, you answer. You don't go out seeking. Now, that's not the same as an evangelical gift. An evangelist is also only a male. It is his job to run around. But he has to know that that's his gift. And God forbid he should think that's what his gift is, and it isn't. He'll get in trouble with God. If you think you have a gift you don't have, you're going to get in trouble with God. If a woman thinks she's a pastor, she's in trouble with God already. You will never learn anything under her but hot air. Okay, so reviewing. No woman is a pastor teacher. No woman is an evangelist. But every woman is a witness. Every woman is a reporter because everybody who believes in Jesus Christ has that job. To be a witness means you wait until you are asked. Or you can do videos like this because you're not imposing on somebody. Same thing for the reporter role. Same thing for a researcher role, male or female. 
And of course, you got to know if God's giving you that job. Now, even to be a witness or a reporter or a researcher, which is a job everybody potentially has, you have to be trained, honey. Trained. You learn and live on Bible under your male pastor. You use 1 John 1 9 and you train. You learn what it says. You don't go shooting your mouth off until you're sure. Unless you want to be punished by God. And God punishes you in a lot of different ways. And the worst way he can punish you is to do nothing. So if you think you're having all this success and nothing's happening and, and all this good stuff is happening to you, you better watch out. That's the worst kind of punishment you can get. I'm dead serious about this. So you train. You know what you're talking about. You study that Bible. And the most re biggest reason you got to study for it is God hears every thought you think. That's your first job. Your first job is priest to God. He hears every thought you think. What are you thinking? Does it line up with the Bible? If so, how? If not, how? And that's in the God Deeds series I'm doing that. God Deeds Mindset. Okay, I've already finished part six, which basically covers the structure of the God Deeds Mindset. That's what you're supposed to learn. Hebrews 11.6 Apart from doctrine, Greek word is pistis, and it means word in you that you believe. And I explain the origin of that. It's a commercial word. Okay, it's content. It's the content. And you believe in it because the content is sacred. Or, or you know, provable. Well, can you prove it? If you can't prove it, you don't know it's provable. Is the doctrine that you think you believe actually in the Bible? Or does the Bible say something else? Okay. So you better be careful if you're a witness or a reporter or a researcher that you know doggone well and can prove that what's coming out of your mouth is what the Bible says. And if not, you're in deep doo-doo with God. Use 1 John 1 night and ask him. I'm dead serious. Everybody in the body's got this job. Now, does that mean you should be making videos? I don't know. Sometimes it's good training. I have to do it for that reason primarily. Sometimes, you know, you just write it out on a sheet of paper and nobody sees it. I don't know. You have to ask God, how do you train in this work? But know for sure that when you get prepared and you actually know the gospel accurately, people will come to you. You don't have to go to them. When you get trained in a particular doctrine accurately, people will come to you. You don't have to go to them. You don't impose on people. You do not wear your Christianity on your sleeve, and you certainly don't get involved in politics. Male or female. You don't politicize Christianity. That's Revelation 17. So the whole pro-life movement, just throw them all in the trash. They wouldn't know the Bible if it bit them, and of course they don't. The whole pro-life doctrine is anti-Bible. I've been documenting it, and I've got several years it's going to take me to document all the verses but I documented some really important verses already. You can go look it up yourself. It's not about abortion. It's about who makes you. God says he makes you at birth and gives you your first breath, Genesis 2-7. If you don't know that, then you're probably wrong on a lot of doctrines because Genesis 2-7 is even properly translated for the most part. It's just got one word wrong in it. It says God breathed life in the translation. The literal Hebrew is God breathed lives, plural. Because Adam didn't have an old sin nature, so he had a spiritual life too. See, I'm trained. So I can reel this stuff off the top of my head and I know what I'm telling you is true. And if I catch a mistake, I have to report it to you also. So I can be a researcher. So I can be used even though I'm a woman. That doesn't make me a teacher. That just makes me a reporter. But I'm still liable for what I say to you. And if I f screw it up, then i got to report that. And I will. 
Sorry this video is so long. I hope it's helpful to clarify women's roles, and especially my own. Um, that's it. Peace out.